Dumb Dumber and Yellow contribute heavily to well, the Uncarrier Revolution. I know it's, people scratch their heads and say, how can, how can they do that? That's part A of my answer. Part B of my answer is, who the f are you anyway? Colorful language from a colorful CEO. But as wireless wars heat up, can this disruptor keep taking share? I'm always telling you that management matters, that the people running the show at a given company can make a huge difference in terms of its performance. Case in point, John Leisure, the outspoken, hard-charging CEO of T-Mobile. Roughly four and a half years ago, T-Mobile was basically an also-ran wireless company, had a lot of trouble competing with the big boys. ATT and Verizon, I think they're going to put them out of business. But then Leisure took over and almost single-handedly turned T-Mobile into the Uncarrier, a consumer-friendly phone company. Boy, is that incredible, right? The antithesis of the major wireless players who are always trying to lock you into long contracts and then hit you up with all sorts of hidden fees. Yet Leisure really broke the mold. And I'm not just talking about T-Mobile's racy and hilarious Super Bowl ads. More importantly, his strategy has made the company incredibly successful, profitable, lucrative. A few years ago, it seemed like T-Mobile was fading into relevance. Now it can't stop gobbling up market share from Verizon and ATT. What is the fabulous quarter the company reported just this very morning? T-Mobile delivered a monster 16-cent earnings beat off a 29-cent basis, higher than expected revenue, up 23% year-over-year, and nearly 1.2 million branded postpaid new subscribers, their best number in four quarters. Meanwhile, the company's costs are declining, its churn is extremely low, and management gave solid guidance. This is a fabulous story, but don't take it from me. Earlier today, I got a chance to check in with T-Mobile's super competitive CEO, John Ledger, the man who masterminded the turnaround. Take a look. All right, John, the truth is you did have the best numbers. We all know that. By a mile. By, yeah, yeah. Look, I'm going to, we're going to stipulate that, so we don't even have to talk <laughs> about dumb, dumber, and yellow. Yeah. What I need to know is ethos, okay? A lot of people feel that companies themselves are soulless, that CEOs are buttoned down, and that if you do become anything other than that, it's going to hurt your business model. Right. You are a living, breathing example that that's wrong. Yeah. Well, as an example, this, uh, this button-down CEO would like to give you this Valentine's card. And you can just see, Jim, it says, Verizon is red, AT&T is blue. T-Mobile loves our customers, and we love theirs, too. So that is uh, the first gift I have for you. Now, that is, you know, just you know, that's seditious within its own uh, sweet way. Yes. And I know it was your birthday. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm not always around. And sometimes you need to hear from me. So to your, your board, I created, I wanted to give you something fun for those times when I can't be there in person. Right. And you're and the rare, rare moments. Be. So it's a, it's, a, it's a button. And I'm going to give you, you can press it and it says things like, We won't stop. Or, Dumb and dumber just don't get it. And then, of course, Just shut up. And listen to your customers. So I'm going to give you that. And when it's time to think about me, uh, you can do that. And Why isn't there a lawyer who says, hey, oh. listen, oh. you know, I, 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 John, you're off the reservation. Yeah. Why isn't there a lawyer who says that? Oh, there is. Uh, but then we took them off the reservation. <laughs> listen, when, when I started this game uh, here, you know, it, there was a lot of questions about my, you know, like who I am, how I dress, what I do. Right. But I, as I said many times, I am my customers. Right. And I think somebody has said to me, hey, John, like, you're the coolest CEO. We have to take that in two pieces. Because CEOs aren't cool. No. Some book no. was written at some point in time that said you have to be a suit. You can't say this. You're a big social media player. Congratulations on a million okay. followers. Um, but that's a, that's, that's, it's a whole different game. And by the way, I think in a short period of time, um, other companies are asking themselves, hey, wait a minute. Maybe there's a different way to engage our customers and employees. And, um, you know, that's what I am. I'm all about customers and employees. Okay, well, let's talk about something that the other guys, I mean, we make, they have different characterizations for them. But what I'm, <laughs> ATT seems to recognize, hey, maybe, you know, we're a content company, we have to buy Time Warner. Uh, Verizon says we're a content company, we're buying Yahoo and AOL. Yeah. Um, it, look, you busted the oligopoly, but maybe this is a new oligopoly and you need content. But do you buy all that? Uh, hello, I'm Randall Stevenson speaking to you from Pebble Beach, where we will be golfing. You're not allowed to imitate. No, come on, give me a break. It, why? And by the can way, you, as industries change, as, as industries change, why do you need to fail in the one that you're in? But okay. maybe, the, maybe it is just this is a device, well, and you need content. Okay. Hey, let's not rule it out. 
They can't be stupid and stupider. Then why every time you need to do something, do you need to use your balance sheet and own and control the next move? Why do you have to pay $50 billion for DirecTV? And why do you have to pay $85 billion to buy Time Warner, right? Why? Okay, let me tell you, you don't, okay? Here's your smartphone. Everybody that has one picks it up, and then they listen to all these suits, and they say, you know, the young, young kid with the phone says, what the hell is a cable industry? What's a wireless industry? What's a content industry? I don't even know what that well, is. Wh why do you I know? want to pick that up, and I want to watch what I want to watch, where I want, and I want it free. Okay, now let me ask you something. I'm watching the Super Bowl with my buds and stuff, yeah. okay? And you know something. No you, Eagles, no Seahawks. Uh, hey, now, now don't. I love the that, Eagles. Thank you. Okay, Not as much was, as Seahawks. That was going to be real down. That was just, <laughs> whoa, I mean, I was doing great with you. And then you decided to pull the plug. Um, how did you identify, how did you, come up with a commercial that made it so we all stopped. And what would be the actual commercial had you been able to run it? Okay, so um, what we did, now first of all, back to the, the other guys. Yeah. We don't have the money they have. We can't constantly drone on on the television with commercial after okay. commercial. So what we do is we pick our moments. Right. And then we do them big, and we do them disruptive. We do them with disruptive partners, and then we work around them. We manage the social. So we were, by the way, we were the biggest advertiser in the Super Bowl, right next to Budweiser. How cool is that? But if you didn't right? have the money, I mean, this cool? was just worth it. Okay. You got some sort of ROI well, here. What happened? Yes, my God. Here, I'm going to give you the number. So what happens is we started looking at um, commercials, and they have to stand out. Well, we liked what we had so much that we bought more spots. We had one with Justin Bieber. Right. And by the way, on the side, we convinced Justin Bieber to come back to Instagram. The most followed guy came back, and all of a sudden, what did he post? That He posted this. Right. Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart. Adorable. They were great. And then we had two with Kristen Schaal that yeah. were takes off, or takeoffs on Fifty Shades of Darker. Right, And right. they were fabulous. They had to cut some I, I, I uh, thought that there were, was like a they, sexual implication. We had was one. that correct? Oh, yeah. My God. See? Harry Met Sally <laughs> moment. By the way, two of our commercials were banned until we made small changes. And, you know, the, the second one, which is a 60-second commercial uh, about an interaction with a Verizon rep about taxes and fees. Yeah. And she had a little Harry Met Sally moment that was hilarious. The whole thing was beautiful. Here's the last piece. Is there an ROI? We had four billion social impressions on our ads. Uh, our commercials were viewed 90 million times. We were the second most talked about brand on Twitter behind Pepsi. And the, and most, have, the yeah. most discussed... Uh, Super Bowl commercials, according to Insights. Okay, so, last question, John. Yeah. All of that can obviously get more subs. Yeah. Is, is there something bigger out there that you want than just more subs? Um, yeah, it, remember, when I started this whole thing 13 uncarrier moves ago, I stood on a stage and I said that we are going to fix a stupid, broken, arrogant industry. Right. Every move we make, it's our intent that the whole industry move. Like, you know, uh, Uncarrier Next, we announced we're all in on Unlimited because the internet, the mobile internet should be viewed Unlimited. Our goal is to get everybody kicking and screaming to Unlimited. Guess what? Verizon just folded their hands and came kicking and screaming. That's our goal. Now, what we want to do, Jim, there's major changes still needed. And they range from fun new devices, 5G, and even small things like how do you serve customers in a totally different, complete way? And that's as highly innovative and disruptive but as anything. If I were one of these companies, I would say, you know what? I'd buy you either to put you out of business or I'd buy you either to be our leader. I mean, what do you think? Right. Yeah, no, come on. Take I over. would too. I would, oh, come on. You talking about me or the company? Yeah, well, I mean, I would just buy. I, see, I would in the soul in the suits meeting in the board. I, I say, would say, I am putting this guy out of business. Damn it! I am buying him. But no. But three years to take. First of all, do not walk across the street with me. I would say, you know, you. Well, what happens? Oh yeah, no. Come on. What would you do to me? Yeah. You know what you yeah, do to me. You're right. You're right. right. <laughs> so, but by the way, for three years. By the way, that's how oligopolies think. They don't think that they need to change. They think you need to disappear. Well, guess what? I'm not. My team is unbelievable. My people are passionate. My brand is incredible. I've created the next 20 years of leaders. They can't get rid of me because I've created 100,000 of me. John Leisure, T-Mobile, T-M-U-S. What a story. What a guy. Thank you, bud. Thank you. Stick it, Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.